Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Hope well, hope you've uh, enjoyed your day, whatever it is that you were up to today. Hope you did enjoy it, you looked after yourself. Um, I did release a video earlier talking about the new director of football, technical director that we have in Johan Lang, as well as an update around Fabio Paratici. Go back, have a little watch of it. It's definitely something to keep, an up, keep up to date on. A lot of changing parts in the hierarchy with Scott Munn, Johan, Fabio Paratici, you know, anyone that's working within the realm of, of being in the hierarchy, you're going to want to keep an eye on that because it's definitely a moving situation. But let's talk about some transfers because I did promise in that video I've, I've had, I'd, I would have a video on transfers. And I'm glad that I didn't actually make the video earlier on. Solely for the reason something came out of the blue and I didn't expect it. I would never have guessed it, and I'm a little bit surprised by it. So I'm going to come to that in a minute, whereas we do have also some updates around Eric Dyer and potential interest in Eric Dyer. I suppose he's interested in, 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 well, maybe not interest as such, but certainly Spurs' focus when it comes to January. So we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. So let's let's jump straight in with the one that shocks me, and you'll see he is the thumbnail, Calvin Phillips. Yeah, it, it definitely shocked me. But this comes from Steve K from Transfers.com, who put out uh, that Tottenham retain an interest in Calvin Phillips in January. Uh, this is a difficult one. Now, I know you're probably sitting on the other end kind of going, no, 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 yes, 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 right? And you know me, I'll always put out different schools of thought. You know, the first thought is that like, he's not played... He's not played really for Man City since going there. He didn't really play much in his last season at Liverpool, at Liverpool Leeds. You know, in his last proper true season, he was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic for Leeds. Um, I would have thought with Rodri's sending off, he'd have had some game time in the last few games. He hasn't really had that, to be honest. He wasn't very good against Wolves. I did, I did watch that game. It was one of those moves that it screamed Jack Greenish. It could work. <clears throat> he might take time to adapt, but it could work. It hasn't worked so far. It doesn't mean it can't work, but it hasn't worked so far. Now, my guess, if, if I was to sort of think about a deal, what a deal would look like, it would be a loan deal. There's no way, there's no way we're going to offer enough money that is going to be enough for City to either regain some of their losses or regain their, their their money they spent on on Calvin Phillips. But what I would say, there is obviously those benefits to having Calvin Phillips. You know, there's the benefit of the fact that he is homegrown. That always plays a part when it comes to European competitions. I think also what you'll find is with Calvin Phillips, he knows the Prem. He has had success in the Prem. He's shown that he can be a very good player in the Premier League. <clears throat> Where I sit on this deal... Is, for me, it's a no. Um, the reason why I think it's a no is I want someone to play their central defensive midfielder role a bit like Basuma. You know, can drive with the ball, links up play, you know, can get away from a press. You know, you'd, you'd think Rodrigo Bentoncourt would be able to do that, for example. Maybe Pape Matasar could even do that. And for me, I've always wanted the... the I want one of those two to be deemed a six. So I want, let's say, Basuma's the, the outright six. And let's say Pape Matasar's the outright eight. You know, Benton Core can't get back in the team. Oh, Biss is injured for a couple of weeks. All right, well, I want Benton Core to go play six. Or I want Pape Matasar to go play six. And the other one play the eight. That's why I'd want another eight. That's where I would be personally. An eight that, okay, if you're going to put one of those two as the six, I want him as a box to box. If he's going to be, if those two aren't going to be, you know, uh, one of the backups to six, then I'm going to want an out and out number six to replace Basuma. And what I don't want is more of a defensive minded, not as agile centre defensive midfielder, because it shows that Basuma in this system works magnificently well. He's been one of the best midfielders in the league this season. Calvin Phillips isn't the same sort of player. Oliver Skip isn't the same sort of player. Hoiberg isn't the same sort of player. And that's where my head is at. But it's interesting. I definitely will keep an eye on that. Because it's definitely interesting that Spurs do keep an interest in him. He certainly could be surplus to requirements. Let's talk Eric Dyer. So I've got a couple of um, 
reports. First one from Ekrem Kanur, who puts out that Sporting Lisbon are in talk to sign 29-year-old defender Eric Dyer in January. Turkish and Saudi Arabian clubs are planning to make a move for the English defender in January, right? So that was the first one. Then the second one comes from Tom Alna, who put out that Sporting Lisbon have discussed bringing Eric Dyer back to the club when his Tottenham contract expires next year. So the following summer, obviously, summer of 2024. Uh, Sporting could, make an, could even make an offer for a transfer at a reduced fee in January. Now, look, I, for me, personally, would want Eric Dyer moved on. I'd want either one of the young guys in the, the youth setup or Phillips become the backup to right centre-back or a brand new centre-back full stop. I still think we need one regardless of the Eric Dyer situation. He obviously has the idea of I want to be a free agent next summer. So when it comes to it, I can get the most money possible from like signing on fees and things like that. Because if you're getting a player on a free agent, instead of spending five million pounds to a club, you as a player could say, give me four million. Give me five, that five million even. And you just give it straight to the player and the player signs for you. You get more out of it as a player, right? That's why he wants to do it. He wants true... He wants true free freedom to make his decision. Fair enough. You know, uh, I think everyone who you know is quite concerned with money, you, you're probably the same, right? So the reality is, you're probably going to best the best situation you get is a loan deal. Now, if you send him back to Sporting Lisbon, be it his former club, he might take a loan deal and then sign with them for agency. I say for agency like it's an American football or basketball term, but you get what I mean. As a free transfer in the summer. For me, I think that's the best situation we're probably going to get out of this. I don't see him moving permanently to a club. He doesn't want to do that. He wants he wants freedom. Fine. I'd send him on loan. I'd say to a club, look, you don't even need to really give us any money. Just take his wages. And for me, that's as good as you're probably going to get. It also benefits us. It frees up a space, a space on the bench <clears throat> for a player that you want to bring through and develop. Who's going to be here for the long haul? And that's the way I look at it. You know, I look at... Like a Perisic, for example, you know, Perisic still rumours that he might be going in January. You know, if you're going to move a player who's not going to be playing or doesn't want to be here, bring in someone that is wanting to be here. Bring in someone that you can train up who's going to be here for the long haul. You're better off doing that. So, but anyway, that's enough on Eric Dyer. Um, this again from Tom Ulner as well, who put out that Tottenham Hotspur will focus on shifting fringe players in January for making significant additions. Dyer, Lloris, Hoiberg and Hill all among those who could depart, although Hill may be needed after injuries to Solomon and Perisic. Uh, well, uh, Hill is needed. We have no attacking options in the forward line. As soon as we lose Brennan Johnson, we're down to bare bones. So we have to have Brian Hill. And that's what I'm so interested in seeing in the next few months is how Brian develops. And I'm hoping to see a little bit more of him, maybe until was the back end of October, to really see what we've got there in the attacking situation with Brian Hill. On the other three, look, we, we just talked about Dyer. I'm not going to go through that. Lloris, he is technically in the Premier League squad. But what I would say is he's not got a future at Spurs. He does need to move on in January. And again, if you move in Lloris, you move in Dyer, you know, you move a Perisic, you save a lot of money on your wages side of things. You free up spaces in the squad to bring in players that maybe you bring in a couple of youth players, you know, that Ange can kind of train up. Maybe you bring through some of the youth players you can train up. Maybe you bring in, a, you know, a, 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 a not seasoned veteran, like he's an, he's an old player, but someone in, who's coming into his prime and then a couple of youth players, something like that, you know. On Hoiberg, I think that'll be a situation that he can move if we can find a replacement. That's the only one I think that has a caveat is Hoiberg. If we can get a replacement, I think he gets moved. And if we're talking about players like a Conor Gallagher, for example, who is a number eight box to box, then you better look at Pape Matassar or a Bentancur, who can play six. Because Pape Matassar, Bentancur are both better than the skip. Gallagher, better than the skip. I don't ever see skip kicking on. And that's why I'm looking at this situation. Now, I think that's a situation that maybe gets rectified a bit more in, in, in the following summer, but I definitely think centre-half could be something that we're looking at this this January chance window. I think central midfield potentially, depending on Hoiberg, but I can't see us having a big January chance window. Maybe two, maybe three. I think two is probably what we're going to get, but we shall wait and see. But anyway, guys, that's in the video. I hope you did enjoy the video. Drop a like on the video if you did. Hit me in the comment section below around, you know, the whole situation with the midfield situation, with Hoiberg potentially going. You know, you've also got Brian Hill, Larice, the Dyer move. Do you, do you expect Dyer to move on? 
obviously the big one. Calvin Phillips, would you want him at Spurs? I'm interested to see what you guys think about that. But hit in the comments in below. Hit me with a like. It always helps with the algorithm and things like that. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Welcome if you are new. Very happy to have you along for the journey. And hit the bell notification for more. But anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.